In this poster, we'll speak about optoelectronic synapses based on hot electron-driven reactive tunnel junctions, which can be used as fundamental building blocks in future neuromorphic computing platforms, which utilize the principles of probably one of the most efficient computing systems in the world, our brain. Actually, computation in the neural networks of our brain happens not in the neurons themselves, but in connection between neurons called synapses where the electrical signal is transferred into chemical one and then back to electrical in the receiving neuron. So the overall transfer of the electrical signal through the connection happens with a certain weight coefficient. Then, upon a learning process, these weight coefficients between various neurons are adjusted, so in the output of the neural system it will be a result resulting in an idea of an action of a living being. Now, how does this learning process work? How the weight coefficients are adjusted? Actually, in simple words, just using two rules. First, the weight coefficient can go up and can go down. And the second, that the weight coefficient depends on prehistory. It has a memory effect. It depends on how much signal has flown through the synapse before. So, to realize an artificial synapse, we just need to create a system obeying these two learning rules. So, here it will be our artificial synapse. One neuron will be a gold nanorod, another neuron will be an optic gallium helium electrode, and a synaptic gap will be a tunnel gap between these two electrodes created by PLH polymer. This system can be created on the basis of nanorod metamaterial by depositing a polymer and then a, a second electrode. So, let us realize the rules. First rule will be realized on the basis that tunneling through the tunnel gap is very sensitive to whatever happens in the gap. So, we can change the weight coefficient for the tunneling by changing the state of PLH polymer by reducing it or by oxidizing it. So, in this way we can adjust the weight coefficient for tunneling, but not only for the tunneling, because some of the electrons tunnel inelastically, creating light. So, we can adjust weight coefficient for the light emission as well. And actually, that's what we observed in this experiment. We put our system in reducing or oxidizing atmosphere, and we saw that we changed the weight coefficient for the light emission, and so it is weight coefficient for the tunneling as well, because these two things are related. Now, what about the second rule, about memory effect? The thing is that this reaction is critically catalyzed by hot electrons created by elastic tunneling. So, the state of the reaction it depends on how many hot electrons has been in this region before, or in other words, how much tunneling current has traveled through the tun tunnel junction before. So this is the memory effect, which we need to realize. Here it is. And this effect we can see on these graphs, when the emissive state and resistive state depends on how many hot electrons appeared on the other side before. Finally, hot electrons can be created by illumination of light as well, which gives our synapse the truly functionality of complete optoelectronic synapse. So, for details, see my poster or these references. Thank you for your attention.